What's going on team? Welcome back to the channel. We had a crazy week last week and you know we saw the biggest market crash Friday, Thursday, Monday. It's the biggest recovery back to all time highs. We went on Monday from full panic on Tuesday to full euphoria. Never seen anything like it. And that's why I tell you guys all the time, stock market trading, stock trading, uh, options trading is very very emotional and you gotta keep that in mind while you're trading. You cannot let panic set in. You always gotta uh, listen to the charts, be reactive to the charts, and you know, listen. If you have a plan, stick to it. Even if you're wrong in the end, over the long term, I promise you, you're gonna do all right. But next week, it's probably gonna be just as crazy. We have a lot of ER reporting. Uh, sorry, a lot of earnings reports coming out next week. A lot of big tech uh, reporting next week and too, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a quite uh, volatile time. So if you like volatility, as day traders, we love it. We love volatility. We make money both puts calls, shorting, long side, we don't care, we just like to make money and volatility is great for us because it gives us, usually, usually gives us a good direction uh, where things are going, good or bad, and we capitalize on it. So if you like this video, if you guys want to see more educational content, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below, let me guys, let me know what you guys want to see next. If you want to trade with me live every single day, hit the link in the uh, in the description below to join our Discord community, or if you want more about the stock market, we also have a full course. So let's go over into charts right away. You know, I'm still in Italy, guys, if you can keep up with us on Instagram, make sure you follow the Big Gains Club on Instagram, I'm still in Italy. Kind of sign burn. I went on a long trip to Capri, uh, Positano, Malfi, went on a yacht for a day. It was a great time to unwind and a great time to reset coming to the next uh, trading week. And you gotta reset, guys. Trading is very, very mentally tough. Uh, they did a study that, uh, forgot exactly what the study said, but it said something like that a trader over eight hours of focusing on charts burns out almost as much as a full marathon. So it is mentally tiring, tiring watching the charts, uh, you know. Uh, the stress levels, being positioned, making money, losing money, it's really, really tough. So take the weekends to reset and take the Sundays or the Saturday when you have time to look over charts. Because looking over charts, bring down a watch list is what's going to make you guys profitable and consistent over the long term. So let's go over some uh, charts. The chart I want to look at is actually the SPY. Let's have a few thoughts on the SPY. And my first thought is that yes, we had a great week. We had this great recovery. We bounced on this bottom trend line that's been uh, going on since back in November and this trend line has been very very accurate uh, it's a trend line that I've relied on multiple times shorting and uh, going long on the spy trying to catch the reversals and it's been very very accurate we bounced today I thought it uh, also bounced on this support I had drawn out which was 424 I mentioned that in chat uh, multiple multiple times that 424 was a great level that we needed to watch and hold which we did we bounced on it here we dipped a little bit below but it's actually on this day which was the 19th of July when the market almost hit uh, all time low for the for this little mini crash that we had, we actually bought some spy calls that expired Friday and those expired at over 520%. So if you caught that, we caught the bottom. A lot of people didn't enter because they were panicking, they were worrying, they were listening to social media, they were listening to all those clowns online talking about market crash. But no, we caught the reversal and uh, yeah, we caught the reversals that, because that's, that's just what we do. We, we listen to the charts at the end of the day. A lot of people ask me, Antonio, oh, you might be wrong on this thesis that you had, you might be wrong on something. Hey, in the end, I don't care to be right or wrong, I just, I'm just i going to listen to the charts. Uh, and react to them. Stock trading is not about actually being about proactive, it's actually being being reactive to what's given to you. It's, uh, whatever the spy do, it's pretty much out of my control. I just react to it and follow along the big money. So that's the kind of mindset you gotta have. A lot of things you gotta be proactive, sometimes you gotta be reactive, and that's what stock trading all the times it is. So what do I think about the spy? So we have this small gap here. It's really really tiny gap for 35.89 all the way to 436.4 49 or so. So you have this tiny little gap, which I do not like at all. You guys know me, I hate gaps. I think they always gotta be filled. Uh, and I really don't like how we saw some a little bit of the volume here fading. So we had this big spike here on this red day, and then this pretty large spike here on this volume. And then we saw the last three trading days uh, when we went back to the all-time highs, kind of going lower and lower. Kind of showing me I don't see a lot of uh, big money going in. And yes, you might see that here when we had this consolidation period. The volume is fading off, and as you can see, it is it is here selling off back into the trend line and back up. Also, another thing I like to point out is the last time that we had the tech ERs, which I do not even remember when it was Tesla ER dates. That's all I'm gonna remember. I'm just gonna look up Tesla ER dates, which was on March, March, uh, March 20th, April 26. Sorry, it was April 26 was here so this was the when we saw the last time that we saw uh tech reporting you know from the 26 here we had this 
pretty big period of volatility here. Um, this is the last week that we reported, kind of causing a bit of a sell-off. Then we saw the bottom, kind of into the choppiness, uh, dipping, dipping. We haven't recovered. We took us a little while to recover back to this 422 area. So we saw two weeks of kind of down, a little bit of a down trend. So will I be surprised if I saw that? No, I will not be surprised. I'm kind of expecting potentially another little sell-off. Might not be uh, huge, but I do expect a bit of a sell-off coming up. To be honest with you guys. Uh, into the SPY and the triple Q just because a lot of these stocks are trading at all-time highs and when you're trading all-time highs it means your earnings gonna be all-time great they can't just be beating expectations they can't just be uh, you know meeting expectations they're gonna be destroying the expectations uh, with all these tech stocks but of course that's gonna be up to the earnings I don't know exactly what they're gonna be we're gonna see on Monday and the coming week but it's just kind of what I'm what I'm expecting uh, I would take a position based on the chart, but they're just going over the overall SPY. Uh, I just want to call over it a lot because a lot, a lot of people always ask me about it. Can you go over the market? Go over the market. And since it's going to be a crazy week, uh, you know, I, I would like to go over it. So the first play that I like to talk about coming in the next week is ticker symbol Roblox. Ticker symbol Roblox was also a play that we traded on the weekly newsletter last week. We called this uh, falling wedge pattern here inside of this bigger kind of flag, daily flag that's been making for a while now. And we did catch any bounce and it got rejected right above this trend line. So what I would like to see from Roblox is either two plays, break out of this and look break out of this flag, pretty much kind of like a, not much of a flag, you know, like a triangle, the same triangle, whatever you call that same triangle with this bottom uh, support here, if you want to call it, or a flag, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, we break out of this, we hit the first resistance, 89, and then we move up to 95. That's all I like to see. And they also have ER coming up 16 of August, so they still have a bit of far away from the ER. So if this breaks, that's I'll be looking to take a long position on Ticker Symbol Roblox. And it looks it looks good. I like it. This it just broke out of this falling wedge. And yes, it got rejected on this trend line, but it, this kind of expected. So hopefully bounce back down. And then on the second try to break again. Or if not, even Monday, if we get a strong gap up, it could gap up and break through. And I'll be looking to take a long position and profit targets 89, 95. And eventually 100 in its all time highs if we do get to that level. But that's what I'll be looking at for ticker symbol Roblox. Another ticker symbol, and it's gonna be a little bit off card because it's actually gonna be a bit of a, a bit of a Neo, it's gonna be not on the daily time frame. This this Neo play it was this falling wedge there, not a falling wedge, yes, on Neo that we saw on the daily time frame. We caught that last week as well. That's why you know you gotta keep up to our weekly newsletter and you know you gotta keep up to this channel. It always gives some really fire plays, and I think I'm somewhere between 80% accuracy on tickers that we give us an entry based on the setup that we see, which is you know pretty good. Uh, if I say so myself, people a lot of people saw this head and shoulder pattern on Neo, which you know I do agree with. It does look like a bit of a head and shoulder, but for myself, because I'm crazy, I had seen this falling wedge pattern, which executed perfectly for us. And you know, a lot of people had seen this kind of going to short Neo. I had seen more of a falling wedge on the shorter term, but it did get rejected on the second profit level. But you know, we are pretty much already out of this position for the day trade. But Neo actually on a longer time frame, which I have not done too much on channel showing a bit of a longer time frames I've usually stuck to daily time frames or the hourly but I actually like Neo here on the weekly time frame a lot uh, very similar to the daily pattern the falling wedge I spot here on the weekly and if you're familiar with the weekly all the patterns are you know if you're in the five minute one hour whatever time frame you're on all the patterns are going to be executed based on the time frame which means if you're creating a pattern on a on a weekly time frame it's just going to mean that this you got to give the trade more time and I see another on the weekly time frame here I see another falling wedge pattern it's falling wedge bullish pattern which means on the break of this is we're around the support level look at this we're on the support level we hit bounce hit the trend line and looking for a squeeze up so if we get the squeeze up falling wedge pattern profit target 845 uh, 46 and then I will look at profit target of 50 uh, be my third profit target until and then you can you know you can, you can keep going and after that you know just take profits whenever you're happy but i'm looking at another falling wedge we traded falling wedge on daily last pattern now i'm looking at falling wedge on the weekly on neo and a lot of people love neo so i think it's a pretty good time watching for this break to take a longer term position on neo that have earnings coming up on 27 september and you guys know that i love trading reversals based on er run-ups i trade those very well one of my trading styles is to catch those reversals into a run up, and a lot of times those are caused to when a stock is getting closer and closer to earnings, you're gonna see a run up a lot. 
uh, just because of the timing of people trying to get in before the earnings, expecting earnings to be really good. And the sentiment on you is that the earnings is going to be much better than people are expecting as they're getting a lot more sales done, uh, they're going to be a lot more uh, expanding their market share in the EV market and you know being competitor in that whole aspect. And if you have my opinion, Neil, of course, I like the EV, EV sector as a whole and Neil's being one of those uh, bigger players in the, uh, in the sector. So look for this break here and look for this move up. Move up with these profit targets, hopefully leading into the this ER that they have. Uh, I was just showing the ER, I don't know what, there we go. Uh, on the 27th of September, 28th of September. Um, so they expected negative 0.09. If they do just even break even, I think it'll be some, a pretty good win for uh, the stock. Next up, let's talk about ticker symbol Airbnb. They have earnings coming up on September 1st, expected negative 0.37, this company is still losing money and this was one of those plays that was um, they ended up too well for us on our weekly watch list that we do, it's one of those plays that pretty much did give an entry above here but it was a fake out, so if you trade on the daily or sorry not on a weekly chart, it kind of gave a bit of a fake out here if you entered it, uh, stopped out for very very little, so it was not a terrible terrible loss if you did take that trade. But uh, it was one of those that, you know, we did get wrong, but it's fine because that happens all the time. And the best part about it is that look at that, we risk very little trying to make a lot of money. So Airbnb, am I still bullish on it? Stock, you know, stock's been going down. Uh, that's why I don't like to trade IPOs. I remember I had this, some guy message me, I forgot exactly who it was. And I know I'm not interested because I don't want to call him out. But they were like, oh, I really want to trade an Airbnb. I know they went uh, public. It's going to be, I don't miss out on this huge opportunity of uh, uh, this great company. And it was more probably around when it was in February, March, when it's nearly its all time highest level. And I told them that about 80 to 90% of stocks that IPO, five years later, are trading lower at their IPO price. So be very careful. Do not trade into IPOs day off. It's not a good idea. IPO day is always a day, as you guys can see here. Stock tanks because all the people that have been holding it, they couldn't sell before. All the early the investors get to trade pre IPO are going to dump it. No, almost none of them are ever going to keep shares unless they're forced to keep shares uh, later just because they want to, you know, they, 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 got, they got their trade in, which was, you know, getting super cheap, get to dump a bag and a bunch of people, and they're probably going to enter later on once they understand it's going to dip if they do like the company long term. So this is going to be a quick lessons for you guys. Remember, do not trade into IPOs the day of the IPO, because it's a scam. It's literally a scam. But now I see uh, with the Airbnb, I see this actually uh, pretty much a reverse cup and handle pattern. I don't even know if it's an official uh, pattern or whatever the name of it is, but I see pretty much like a reversal cup and handle. That it means that it's, this is pretty much going to be the support here on this double bottom. And it's going to be a pattern that's quite uh, bullish in itself. Uh, I think leading up to ER, we're probably going to have a, we're probably going to have a, rather than a run up to ER, a run down to ER. So people expecting uh, Airbnb to keep losing money. You know, there's speculations of Delta variant, travel restrictions going back on. I know I'm in Italy. I have a friend of mine who's supposed to come to Italy from Serbia on Monday, actually. So pretty much, no, on Tuesday, Tuesday 27th, I think it was. And they can't, uh, they called them and they had to cancel this flight because they're, they're not letting people from Serbia come to Italy, uh, you know, because they're cracking down again. So that's all good for a company that already wasn't doing well uh, when it comes down to stocks at least or making money. So I'm expecting this cup here, this reverse cup and handle, break down below it. If you want to be safer, you can even wait, wait under this previous 130 level. That was a previous support to break down to take a short position. And, uh, or if you want to, like me, what I would do is wait for this cup, uh, this little handle here, to break below. This pretty much a better. This also looks like a better, a better flag to me. And uh, it's gonna break down and take the first profit here at 130 in case we get a triple bottom reversal, and then look to take profit again at 125, 121, which would be the, um, the pretty much all-time low from the stock. You know, uh, last year, as you guys can see, uh, did not end up too well for this company. As the last DR, which was on, no, sorry. So the R back in February caused to run down all the way down to the strand line, 163. So the first DR in February caused a sell off. Second ER pretty much didn't do much. Uh, I didn't get, 
so it was 81 it was negative but it did not really get uh, much of a reaction from the market so i think this will pretty most likely be a negative er if you're not swing it up to then i'll be looking for this rundown back to uh, i'll be looking for this rundown leading up to ER, so pretty much the opposite of ER burn up. So these are three plays that I'm looking at next week. Let me know in the comments below if you guys do take those plays. I don't know, I'm very curious and all people in the chat room do take my plays and of course it's driving me live every single day. So you get to ask me a lot more questions about this play and of course if they don't give an enter, do not enter. Just because something's on your watch list doesn't mean you need to enter it. You only enter trades that give an exact entry and stop loss. In case of this, you know the break of of the handle is your entry back into the pattern will be your stop loss. So take trades, with a plan, good risk to reward, and I promise you leave your emotions out of trading, and I promise you that you will be a consistent and profitable trader. Don't be discouraged if you fail sometimes. We all fail, I take losses all the time. Everybody in the chat room takes losses all the time. All the greatest traders that I got to meet, all the hedge fund manager that you know people call the smart money take losses all the time. I would love I'll call those hedge fund guys the dumb money because you have no idea how many mistakes they made. I had the chance of having a couple uh, uh, job offers at a couple hedge funds in my younger days. And I got to reject all them thanks to being able to trade by myself, making the right investments, you know, living below my means at the time, and I got to keep fulfilling my dream of just being a full time trader that gets to travel anywhere they want. So, guys, if you have some place, leave it down in the comments below, you know, help out the community, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. And one last topic I know probably the sound or the volume of whatever you call it of this video is probably lower than my usual quality. It is because I'm traveling and did not bring my blue, uh, yeah, the mic with me this time traveling. Next time I for sure will. I'm just using the microphone that comes with the G7X camera that I use. It's a good camera, but I always like to have a great crisp voice, especially when I'm talking over charts. I know it's a really big topic for everybody, so I apologize for that. Promise you, as soon as I can, I will get that mic back. As soon as I get back to California, where I'm in Italy, as where I can't find any type of uh, microphone products here. But I'll see you guys on the next video, and 